Good afternoon. We're on the record in Giles v. Justice, case number D569413. Your appearance is please. Hey, good afternoon, Your Honor. Robert DeMarco on behalf of Mr. Justice, who's present. Thank you. And good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Chris Smith, Brown of the Defense of the Sixth Farm, on behalf of the plaintiff, Jimmy Giles, who's present. Thank you. And this also, is also with me is my paralegal. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. This is the time set for a status hearing on the status of defendants, visitation, and co-parenting. The court had entered findings of fact and conclusions of law and set up temporary joint legal custody and some exchanges to happen at the Henderson Police Department. I appreciate your status brief, which I have read through. It appears that there are still some difficulties, and we may be um, trying the patience of the Henderson Police Department. So since both parties are in that location or in that area, I am ordering all future exchanges to be done at the Families First facility. Okay. Uh, the marshal can give you a brochure on that Families First, please. Yes, ma'am. They do provide um, exchange locations, and they will also report to the court. Okay. It also appears that we need some type of... Uh, I guess it's it's some type of a hybrid of a parenting coordinator. They also provide this service. It's called parent-to-parent -parent conferencing. You can see from the brochure that was given to you by the marshal. And so this the, is the same family first mark brochure. Same or? place. Okay. Same place. Um, now, I am ordering that the defendant pay for the exchange fee because this was set up due to her actions. The parent-to-parent -parent conferencing, they shall pay equally subject to retaxing of costs depending on how the cooperation goes because it, I did order that defendant was to go to the UNLB parenting class and I have not seen that certificate. And Your Honor, may I approach you recently uh, completed it? I just received the letter that today I would have filed it. I didn't have time. May I approach Your Honor? Um, if you're just going to file it, that's fine. Does it say she completed? It, it, it does. Okay. And when was that completed? Uh, it looks like April 11th, Your Honor. Okay, because, I don't, you know, and I'm not saying that everything that was in the plaintiff's brief was <coughs> true, but I did read through the, the police um, brief synopsis, and I'm still concerned, even if she attended the UNLV class, that there's still some uh, problems going on in the exchanges. Well, Your Honor, just if I may, um, Procedurally, I just want to be clear. Um, I, in this case, I, I've been here kind of for multiple hearings and it was in the context of unbundled representation. I think after the hearing, because of the court ordering the status after the hearing, and I didn't, wasn't fully aware of the status, I kind of thought everything was going okay. I know she reported to me that she was going to UNLV. Um, when I received the status report, um, obviously, there were, you know, it was a lot of narrative uh, stuff in there, which I think would require, unfortunately, some form of hearing, because as the court may know, uh, there were some allegations previously regarding Donna's house that Mr. Giles made that apparently were, for lack of a better term, not true or exaggerated or things to that effect. Um, and my representation specifically, and I've informed Ms. Justice uh, that I uh, basically pro bono for uh, even through the evidentiary hearing or was incurring fees and without going into attorney client privilege, mm -hmm. uh, there was stuff to that effect. I did today file a formal motion to withdraw. Um, just, and I don't want to prejudice Ms. Justice, and I just want to be 100% clear, that is not in any way a reflection on conceding to any of these allegations. It's unfortunate that I have heard of these issues related to what's going on there. Um, it wasn't entirely reflected uh, in their status report, and I apologize, like I said, I didn't want to misrepresent the status of what I believe the case to be, mm -hmm. but there was a period where uh, Mr. Anderson, I don't believe he's with Mr. Smith's office anymore, there was a period in time where they stopped the visitation because they think she needed to complete the class before she could have visitation. Mm -hmm. uh, I needed to check the calendar. I think she may have witnessed a week from that. They ultimately mm -hmm. found out that we were correct and that that wasn't the order that 
it was she needs to go to UNLV class and then we come back and then the court would decide whether to increase it. I did see something in the brief about makeup visitation. Yeah, there was also a holiday MLK day that was missed. She missed the holiday, or she was supposed to have the holiday and he made the mistake, so I think maybe that's what they were referring to. Um, so, and apparently he would tell her, and again, I'm not, my understanding, I'm just giving a very brief status, that everything was okay, which led me to believe, hey, we can come back on this day and hopefully the judge can give you some overnight visitation and you know, my, my part would kind of be done here. Mm -hmm. um, but so are you withdrawing today? I am withdrawing, Your Honor. So are you unbundled, technically? You know, it, it kind of morphed into being retained and just so in an abundance okay. of caution, I filed it just because I wanted court permission. I didn't want to, obviously, here to come here by herself. She knows that if the court were to set another status check or some form of hearing on, on these issues, um, because I, I, I don't think it's fair for her to say, well, we're just going to accept everything is true. I know the court's not saying that in what's in his brief. Um, but, you know, there were many instances where there was no issue. Um, mm -hmm. This stuff about, you know, voicemails being left and stuff like that, I would, uh, obviously, an attorney or someone on her behalf, including her behalf, would want to hear those alleged voicemails and things to that effect. Well, the way I look at it, that's not my jurisdiction. If there's any kind of harassment or stalking, he can report that to the facility, you know, the agency where he resides, if it's a city of Henderson or wherever that's happening. And to my knowledge, he probably has done that. But from the brief, I gleaned that Henderson does not want to be involved anymore. There have been some difficulties and I need to change the point where they exchange, and that's either going to happen here at Donna's house or Families First, which is a similar type of agency, but it's in Henderson, it's closer to where they are, and so that's the only change that I'm making is the point of exchange because I just want someone to report to me, and Henderson obviously isn't tasked to report to me, that's not their obligation, but I did glean from the brief that they're quite tired of supervising this, and, and I don't blame them. They don't want to be involved in it, and they've taken reports, and I've read some of their reports, and so that's the only change I'm making today is where they exchange, because this is a reporting agency. They will get back to me. They will let me know if there are difficulties, but I'm suspecting that there are continuing difficulties, and I don't want that to happen. And, and Your Honor, um, just a further point on the status that um, Mr. Giles, as the court may recall, at the last hearing, believe they had just reopened his criminal case related to this whole incident by the house with the gun, with the drugs, and all that stuff. Apparently that's open. I believe some of this may be being done in retaliation for that because they're subpoenaing my client for witness. She's obviously following the subpoena and going to the criminal court on that. Um, what we would ask, Your Honor, I know the, the court already has indicated, it's obviously been uh, I think we're going on pretty much six months since the status, or I'm sorry, the evidentiary hearing. Um, other than, I think there was one incident where my client called Henderson, but I believe, my understanding, the majority of the other calls were by Mr. Giles calling the police, you know, even in the sense of she was five minutes late or something to that effect, which obviously wouldn't necessitate the police coming. Uh, it's almost like a boy cried wolf type situation. but. Um, uh, Your Honor, I think that we would ask respectfully she could at least have one overnight or some kind of goal where she can have overnights with the child because other than, and again, it's disputed, but other than these allegations of, and I, you know, again, besides these amorphous voicemails and alleged voicemails and him bugging the Henderson police, I don't see anything at this point which would prevent her having overnight at least one or two nights on the weekend, as the court may recall from the evidentiary hearing, there's no ever never been an allegation that she mistreated the child or abused the child or left the child alone improperly. So, Your Honor, uh, I I feel that it is appropriate for some form of overnight to be given uh, to her. Again, it was disputed at the hearing what the custody situation was. We obviously proffered that. It, at some point in time, it was a joint custody type situation. So because there's real no, I don't see anything in the status that says 
I, I saw in the, the thing filed, I think, today that the child allegedly is not talking, but as the court, in my recollection, was the child kind of developed the stuttering issue, so I don't know if it's connected to that, but I don't see anything, Your Honor, at this time, respectfully, that would prohibit her from having some overnight visitation, especially with the nicer weather coming up where they can do things overnight. And <laughs> so we would ask her on at least for maybe one or two nights. And uh, if the court wants to maybe set a shorter status and permit them to go to this place in Henderson, I recommend they go to the place in Henderson because it's closer um, and, and, and give a shot at that and maybe set a shorter status, maybe within 60 days she can come back if everything's going okay. Because the goal here is everybody needs to work together. And I agree. I think inviting the cops into this where they're they're not babysitters and, and they're not going to do that. And I, I, I don't want to point fingers, but I think that if we can maybe get into a, get them into a groove of some overnight and maybe even I don't know, do an exchange and well, this, this place is good. Uh, I, I'm familiar with this place. Uh, but just something to to give her some overnight trial. Well, I'm not making Mr. Smith's argument for him, but I did read his brief that he filed on April the 4th. And respectfully, I did see things that alarmed me about the child, but I will let him argue that. You can be seated. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Your Honor. Uh, again, I agree with uh, the court's read of the brief that I filed. Uh, there are some real concerns here, and to say that there's been no uh, abuse or neglect is a very uh, myopic view of what's gone on in this case. Uh, parental uh, kidnapping is abuse. Uh, talking to a child about killing his father is abuse. Uh, and, uh, you know, this child is not coming back not speaking. This child is coming back afraid. And then, finally, when he does speak, is telling Dad, why do they hate you? Why do they want to hurt you? Why do they want to hate you and Mimi? I don't get it, okay? But this is, the, the child was three, four years old. He's like, just, just turned four years old, Your Honor. And no four-year-old should have to deal with these kind of things. And we're getting to a point where, not where we need to start expanding into overnights, but where we need to get into a, um, uh, a custody evaluation in this case. Because if these things are true, holy cow, this is not... This is not normal, I learned my lesson in uh, UNLV Cooperative Parenting. This is termination of parental rights. We don't do these kind of things, Your Honor. We don't talk to a child and say, I'm going to kill that guy. Your dad, he's a son of a bitch. I'm going to kill him. We don't do that, and that's what's happening here. Sorry, I didn't see that anywhere, Your Honor. Okay, I didn't see any brief, Your Honor. So, uh, Your Honor, uh, yeah, uh, these are horrible things that are happening here, and we're getting to that point. I don't know how to... How to get to the bottom of these things with a four-year-old? I know uh, courts don't often like bringing four-year-olds in to kind of tell the court what the, what the child is thinking. But if, if this doesn't get better, that's where we're headed, and that's what I'm going to be requesting is a uh, a custody evaluation. I don't see that yet. I'm hoping uh, because you know, interspersed with the extreme negative, there have been some uh, no issue exchanges, and that's good. And I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if it's mom with boyfriend. I don't know if it's mom with dad. I don't know if it's mom by yourself. I don't know where the issue lies. But there is a cancer here in this case, and it's affecting this child. Well, there was a history with grandpa, and you mentioned grandpa uh, might be speaking to the child. Yes, sir. And you asked that the court admonish mom not to have the child around grandpa. Yes, sir. And that is an admonishment. Uh, Miss Justice, I don't want your dad around the child, given the history. It can only hurt your progress, because the end goal is to reunify and have a healthy relationship with your child and between the parents. And I don't see that developing as quickly as I would have hoped, especially when she attended the UNLV class. And if the child is in fact saying these things, that at this point it's just an offer of proof that the child is coming back somewhat traumatized and being exposed to alleged threats. And if this continues, you are looking at a child interview as even the tender age of four, but it will be by someone who specializes in parental alienation because I'm very concerned about that. 
so this has to stop. I don't want to see anything like this again in a status report. And Donna Wilburn is probably the only person I can think of that's uh, equipped to do such an interview. And I just don't want this reported to me that the child is, you know, somewhat traumatized. And again, it's an offer of proof. I'm not finding that, but it's being reported. And I have to look at that. I have to consider that. So I am maintaining the status quo with this order. I'm not increasing any visits, but I do want them to go to the family first. I want them to um, enroll in this parent-to-parent -parent conferencing. That's somewhat like a parenting coordinator. It's to get you speaking to each other on a healthy basis. But mom, you have to pay for the exchanges because it's your actions that caused this to have occurred in the first place. Sorry, and I'm going to set, I'm not done, I'm, I'm going to set another status hearing, and at that time I'm going to evaluate whether or not or I have to get Donna Wilburn involved, or if we can, you know, get a great report back that everything is going really good, Families First gives me a super report, and they're getting on, and they're communicating well with the assistance of the, these services, and we'll go forward. That's my hope. So I'll give you a return date. And you had a question, Council? Um, yeah, I just wanted to be clear, um, Your Honor. How much is the exchange fee again? I don't know. Okay. I will. Yeah, we can do uh, like uh, June, okay. June 19th at 2.30. Can you come in? Okay. I'm sorry, Your Honor, what was that date? June 19th at 2.30. And in the meantime, you're requesting to withdraw. Yes, yeah, sure. I would. Um, I'll submit an order to the All court. Right. So, um, just no to put on the record, Ms. Justice, are you opposing your counsel's motion to withdraw? Yes. 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 You're opposing no, you're it. Opposing me. No. Um, court's indulgence, Your Honor. No, so, it's at 2.30. Your Honor, um, she'll clarify she's not opposing my withdrawal. No. Okay, then it's granted. June 19th at 2.30, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Your Honor. Um, and, Your Honor, does the court want me to file the UNLV certificate? Yes, or, please. And uh, just so my client's clear so I can tell her properly that um, set up uh, obviously, all exchanges further at Family First and set up through the, this parenting coordinator through Family First. Does the court expect anything specifically to be done at the next hearing or just be involved in that program? Well, I, I want to get a report from Family First on how the exchanges are going and how this parent-to-parent -parent conference is going because that's, this is meant to help them communicate with each other. Because they, if, if they have a joint legal custody order right now that's temporary, and I know they're not co-parenting yet, and they need to co-parent, so I want to see progress in that area. Okay. Thank right. you, Your Honor. Okay, thank have you. You'll prepare so the order, please, Mr. Smith. Thank you.